Hello fellow economists, I am Mr. Kelvin Tan. In this video, I will teach you how to use the monopoly diagram. Hello fellow economists, I am Mr. Kelvin Tan. In this video, I will be showing you uh, the scenario of a natural monopoly and I will try to explain right, why the natural monopoly is uh, allocatively inefficient just like any other monopoly. Okay, from what we know, right, a natural monopoly is characterized by significant economies of scale. Now, the economies of scale that uh, a natural monopoly possess is so significant that the average cost curve is declining throughout the entire market demand curve. Okay, so let me draw first uh, what is the diagram for the natural monopoly like. This case will be here. Natural. So, draw the usual person. Okay, so this will be the price, revenue, cost. This will be the output. So, to draw the usual AR curve and marker. Declining average cost curve. So it's always declining at all parts of the demand curve. Okay, so since the M the MC must cut the AC at the minimum point, but you can see right, the natural monopoly, the EOS is so significant that the average cost curve is always declining. So the average cost curve is always declining, right? There's never a point where where the marginal cost curve will cut the minimum of the average cost curve since the average cost curve has not yet reached its minimum. Okay, so in this case, uh, this is the case for the natural monopoly. Now, when it comes to natural monopoly, right, the profit maximize. Now, the natural monopoly, like any other monopoly, right, will attempt to maximize its profit. So it will equate the output by, it will set the output by equating MC with MR, which is here. Okay, so this will be the output, QM. The price will be set somewhere here, which is pretty high. Yeah. Okay, this will be its uh, profit maximizing output. QM will be, will be the profit maximizing output. PM will be the profit maximizing price. Now, so let's first ask the question, where is the output where uh, it, will be, it will lead to allocated efficiency? Okay, this is where the, where the MC cuts the AR curve. So in this case, right, this output, Okay, let me call it QAE. Okay, QAE represents the allocatively efficient output. It's all the way here when the MC cuts the AR curve. So in this case, right, there's a massive underproduction by this natural monopoly. Now, how do we explain uh, this uh, this allocative inefficiency using the marginalist principle? So just like the normal monopoly, what I recommend students to do is okay. Take note of a few letters. In this case, it's A. Let me call this A. Okay. Let me call this uh, B. And let me call this C. Okay. A, B, C. Now, what the AR curve represents, right, is again the social marginal benefit curve. Okay. It tells you the incremental increase, the incremental rise in the marginal benefit to society for producing one more unit. So you can see, right, if the natural monopoly were to be producing more of this good, okay, from QM to QAE, if let's say the natural monopoly were to increase its production from QM to QAE, the increase in the social benefit to society is actually, again, write down, increase in social benefit, okay, when the output is increase from QM to QAE. Okay, it's given by the area below the demand curve between QM to QA, which you can see, right, is actually A, B, Q, A, E, QM. Okay, the large size of this trapezium uh, tells you that society would benefit a lot more, from, a lot from this uh, increase in output because the monopoly is clearly underproducing. 
But of course, right, if this natural monopoly were to increase the production from QM to QAE, it also lead to an increase in the cost of society. Why? Okay, for example, right, if let's say the product here, the output here is water. Okay, so if let's say the natural monopoly were to produce more water, it got to divert resources from somewhere else. Okay, you'll need more capital and more land, more labor, more entrepreneurship. So by producing more water, right, it is sacrificing uh, output for another group. Okay, now the question we want to ask, what is the value that we place on the foregone output that we can no longer have because we wanted more water? Okay, it's given by the area below the marginal cost curve. So if you recall right from your externalities, the area below the marginal cost curve tells you the increase in the cost of society from producing additional units of this curve. So in this case, the increase in social cost, okay, again when output is increased, blah blah blah, is equal to the area below the marginal cost curve between the two outputs, which is actually C, B. Q-A-E-Q-M. So in this case, right, it is clear that because the natural monopoly right, is producing at QM, okay, this represents a severe underproduction. Okay, so let's recall again why is it underproduction? It is considered underproduction because when you when you make the monopoly, when the monopoly increases production from QM to QAE, the increase in the social benefit, which is AB, QA, QM, is clearly greater than the increase in the social cost, CB, QA, QM. What this means is this, okay, we benefit more from having, uh, let's say for this case it is water, society will benefit more from having an additional QM, QA units of water more than the value of the foregone output. Okay, we don't care as much as, uh, as when we lose the other output because the value we place on those lost output uh, because we want to produce more water is actually only C, B, Q, A, Q, N. So in this case, right, the dead weight loss, okay, the dead weight loss coming from the underproduction of this uh, water is given by the area, okay, uh, A, B, Okay, so if you shade the triangle, it's not really a triangle, but you can shade the area. This area, right? A, B, C uh, is now the dead weight loss of the natural monopoly because of the underproduction caused by the profit maximizing decision. Okay, so I hope this video is clear. Thank you.